Interfaces have a superpower. They allow you to extend existing interfaces by redeclaring them. This superpower is called declaration merging. How does it work? So we have here an interface called user with a name property of type string. And we can declare another interface using the same name user. And now we can add additional properties. I will add the property H of type number. TypeScript will then be so smart and merge both declarations into one. So our user now needs to get a name and an age. I will show you that by creating a user called Benny. And when I now annotate here the user type, then TypeScript will ask us to provide a name and an age because it merged this declaration with the second one. So let's provide a name. In my case, that's Benny and an age, 35 right now. And then this contract here is fulfilled. And this shows how two declarations get merged into one. That's a very powerful technique. And that's also why the TypeScript team suggests to use interfaces over types. Why would you ever need to modify an original interface? Because here we can control the source code, so we could directly do everything in one interface. Well, there are cases where you want to modify interfaces that come from external packages. To give you a better demonstration, I brought a real-world example with me. And in this real-world example, we are going to extend a Webpack configuration. If you have worked with Webpack, then you know that you can install plugins in Webpack, like the Webpack Dev Server, and those plugins extend then the original configuration of Webpack. Let me quickly bring up the Webpack documentation. I will use the simple browser integrated in VS Code to go to that URL and then we will check out what is up with that dev server. The first thing we will notice is that the Webpack dev server comes from the Webpack dev server package. So it is not inside of the original Webpack package, but it can be installed as an external library. And this library extends Webpack. For example, if we want to start our dev server, when starting our application using Webpack, then we can add the open property and set it to true so that the browser will open once we start our project. And this configuration has to be put into the original Webpack configuration. And we see here already that the documentation uses JavaScript files, so there is no strict typing. You can just do that and the Webpack dev server will then integrate with Webpack and will make use of that property. But when we have TypeScript, it's not that simple because TypeScript has type checking. And I will show you what will happen if we copy that over because we make use here in the Webpack config of um, the configuration type from the Webpack module. And that initial configuration type, the interface here, doesn't have the dev server property, it doesn't know about dev server. So when we add this here, it will tell us that we can't use that yeah, because it uh, is unknown to the initial Webpack configuration interface. To fix this problem, we need to extend the Webpack configuration. This can be done using module augmentation. Module augmentation leverages declaration merging by giving us the ability to extend a module that we are importing. Why is it called augmentation? Well, augmentation is referring to making something bigger. So if you think of augmented reality, then this means that you extend your real world by the virtual component. So virtual reality plus the real world is then the augmented reality. So your real world becomes bigger. And with module augmentation, the interfaces of our module become bigger, we extend them. 
In order to do that, we need to declare the Webpack module. So I will just use here declare module Webpack. And then I can apply the declaration merging to get uh, module augmentation. So I will define the interface that is called configuration. And to that interface, I will add now the dev server property that can have an open property of type boolean. Okay, as you can see now, the compiler is not complaining any longer. Yeah, we have the dev server property now available to us and we just extended the configuration that comes from the Webpack module. Yeah, there was that interface declaration in the Webpack module that we just extended. A fair question to ask is why do we have to do this? Why don't the developers behind the Webpack dev server integrate this declaration already in their package? Well, let's have a look at the Webpack dev server module. If we open here the explorer, we can check the node modules and in the node modules, we will find the Webpack dev server at the very end here. And in that package JSON, there is actually a property for TypeScript typings. And they point to types lib server DTS. So let's open types lib server DTS. And in that file, we may find what we just did. So we did um, a declaration of uh, Webpack. So let's try to find that. And we see here, there is a declare module Webpack. And we see that um, the interface here of configuration gets extended with the dev server configuration. So the Webpack dev server team is actually doing what we just applied. So when we want to rely on their typings, we can simply remove our module augmentation and use theirs to make use of that um, declaration file. We need to import the Webpack dev server module. So we can just write here import Webpack dev server and then we will get their typings and can also then add all the other attributes that are applicable to the dev server property. I just made a little mistake, so let me correct that and also show you what is the problem. By putting an import statement here, we are getting the typings for the Webpack dev server, but TypeScript will also import the source code for the Webpack dev server. So we will get a real import on that module. To demonstrate that, I will compile the webpack config ts file. So let me just use my local TypeScript compiler and then I will give it the webpack config ts file. And in a bit, we will see the transpiled JavaScript output. So we can then see what is really happening with our import statement. So if we go to the webpack config js file, we can see now that there is this require statement. That's more than we need because we just want the typings. How can we get only to the typings? Well, let's uh, first remove this line here and then we will of course see a problem that the webpack config um, doesn't know about the dev server. But fortunately, we can get some help from the webpack dev server repository and its documentation. So if we go to the Webpack um, dev server GitHub repository, then we can first of all see that this project is written in pure JavaScript. So it's not TypeScript code right now, it's still 100% JavaScript, but fortunately it has types and it also tells us how to use the types. So if we check the with TypeScript section, then we see that they are also talking about the problem that the dev server property is by default not known to the configuration interface, but we can point TypeScript to the typings provided by the Webpack dev server by using this triple slash directive. This triple slash directive must be on top of our code. So we have to go here and put it in up front the import statements. We can't put it um, below because if I put it below, 
the code will break again. Yeah, so this must be really like in the first line. And then this triple slash directive will point to the server DTS file that we've seen already. And then this will extend our Webpack interface for the configuration. In proper TypeScript terminology, modules that export only types and no source code are called ambient modules. So we are importing here an ambient module. Why is it called an ambient module? Well, we are just importing types here and the DTS file here doesn't export an implementation. So when we compile this code here, we won't get extra source code with it. With extra source code, I mean that, for example, before we got then this statement here, this require statement. If we use this import here, this uh, triple slash directive import, then we are just importing the typings without the code running behind it. You can think of it as if we would import an environment. So the TypeScript knows what is the environment from our typings. And when an environment comes into play, we can also think of an ambience. Yeah, how is the ambience in that environment? So maybe that helps you to recognize what ambient modules are. And to show you that they really don't bring any extra code to the transpired output, I will run once more the compilation here. And if we open up the config.js file, we see that there is no more require Webpack dev server. I hope this gave you a good overview of uh, module augmentation and declaration merging. So when you find yourself in cases where you need it, you will then know how to do it. And if you want to stay up to date with the latest and greatest about TypeScript, then just follow my TypeScript TV channel here on YouTube. If you subscribe, then you will get a notification when I release new content. Currently, I'm publishing new videos every Monday.